In some games, a player is given the freedom of skill expression with the tools that they are given. In a nutshell, this refers to the ability for a player to demonstrate their creativity and play style beyond just execution. In the Devil May Cry series, as well as other action games, this idea is heavily focused on and I enjoy every aspect of it. And Ultra Kill most certainly satisfies this same concept to an absurd degree. When it comes to first person shooters, I'm not particularly great at them. I feel like an old grandma with Parkinson's trying to put a thread into a needle every time I'm trying to aim. At least when I compare myself to other people that play these games. And even though I stepped into the world of first person shooters in my high school years, it didn't really particularly stick with me. Outside of occasionally playing Borderlands or Call of Duty with high school friends, I didn't really go out my way to play FPS games because my young, smooth brain self thought they were all the same experience. Plus, at the time, I was more comfortable with playing games like Darksiders 2, Assault Spy, and of course, Devil May Cry. In fact, I've been playing Devil May Cry for a lot of years now. And while there's a lot that I love about these games, I can only play so long without getting tired of them since I've been playing for such a long time. After a while, a friend of mine recommended that I play Dusk since it was pretty fast paced and I like that sort of thing. And man, I was so wrong about first person shooters. Like, really wrong. Ever since I played this masterpiece of a game, I wanted to play more. I craved more. So I dived into games like Doom Eternal, Amid Evil, and also Ultra Kill. When I originally played it, I think this was during a time that only Act 1 was made. I heard about it from a few friends and I thought FPS was a style meter. What? I assumed it was a gimmick to draw people in, and I was dreadfully wrong. So, I played the first act and I thought it was really good, but I didn't think too much about it, mostly because I didn't experiment all that much. Afterwards, I left the game to collect virtual dust while I played more games, and in hindsight, I'm, I'm glad I did. Because the following acts that were released completely blew my mind. The color palette for each stage was really nice and welcoming, and I loved the art style. The game also had an amazing soundtrack too, and most importantly, the game felt amazing to play. But there's one aspect that left me very intrigued since I saw a lot of people complimenting one of the biggest strengths of Ultra Kill, and that is what you can do with the guns in this game. Ultra Kill feels like it takes the premise of Dante's gunslinger style and goes absolutely bonkers with it. You have six guns which have different variants and three different arms. From my experience playing FPS games, I noticed that each gun in a game would usually have a specific function in mind for a player to take advantage of. For example, the shotguns are usually used for a threat that you want to deal with immediately at close range, or with how machine guns are useful for crowds. Ultra Kill has this same principle, but the greatest thing about this game is that how the weapons you gain complement with each other and how it completely changed my perception on what I thought depth was the moment I started getting into it. When I deleted the first save that I had before getting back into the game recently, I had a general idea of what I was getting myself back into. I also started on the standard difficulty since I'm not extremely good at first person shooters. I like to say that I'm okay like i'm all right but I, I understand the systems but man like my movement and aim struggles a lot when things get hectic for moving around you had your usual three dashes three of them in fact you are able to use them very quickly and jumping while dashing will cause you to do a massive leap which will eat up two of your dashes since your dashes are also invincible you might not want to constantly spam them when fighting a boss because it will leave you vulnerable so instead of dodging for movement you can also slide sliding is faster than a regular run speed and if you chain jumps together you can gradually increase your speed. You also had a stomp that allows you to quickly descend to the ground while damaging enemies around you and if it's done at a high enough height it will also perform a shockwave that can launch enemies. And with all of this, you can jump off of walls, which is very, very useful if you're just trying to stay off the ground. While going through both the prelude and act one, the game slowly started to reintroduce familiar weapons and mechanics that I had a vague memory of. Like using the marksman variant of the starting pistol so you can toss coins to set up for ricochet shots. Or with how the shotgun, you can do something called projectile boosting, which you can punch the shells of your shotgun so you can deal a large explosion. And you can also parry projectiles in certain attacks too. So after I reached the V2 boss fight, I was put to the test of all the things that I learned between fighting the previous stages and the mini bosses that I came across. And yeah, I got my butt kicked around a bit, not gonna lie there. But I had fun while getting my butt kicked. And every time that I died, I immediately started back up to learn more about how the V2 boss works. And eventually I beat him. 
The rest of the stages that followed kind of made me sweat a bit more because I had to learn how to be more controlled with my movements. For example, the scaffolding that you needed to go across in some of the areas within Bridge Burner felt like the game was trying to test my ability to be aware of the space around me. Some stages were also a test of endurance, seeing how Ultra Kill started to ramp up the difficulty a bit within certain areas while also adding more enemies into the fray. With each stage, I started adapting more and more with every area that I cleared, swapping between my weapons more often. I found myself hitting Ultra Kill ranks a lot easier than I did back when I first played the first act before. Feels weird too. It's like now I know how newcomers felt when they played DMC for the first time and tried to get triple S ranks. But when it comes to the bosses, my favorite fights have got to be the Gabriel boss fight. Both of them, in fact. But the rest of the fights were also very wonderful and well thought out. And for those who are wondering if I found the secrets yet, don't don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that right now. Anyway, the more I played of this game, the more I realized that it continued to hint at me to be a bit more creative with each area that I needed to clear. For example, when I bought the sharpshooter variant for the pistol, I read in the description and saw that you can ricochet a bullet off of the environment. As I continued my way through each stage, I came across a few areas that were these tight and cramped spaces, which gave me this small nagging feeling to try out the sharpshooter pistol. So in one room, I selected that variant and I lined up my shot and... Huh. Another example, during my time in the cyber grind, I would find that one elusive enemy that would try to play hide and seek after I killed its brethren. Sometimes the enemies were way too good at it, which made my style meter start to decrease a bit. Kind of annoying too. It's, it's like witnessing that one try hard kid crawling out the nastiest, dustiest crawl space after everyone has given up playing hide and seek. Eventually, I had the idea to toss a coin high in the air and shoot at it with my marksman revolver, which automatically home in on the stray enemy that I'm trying to find. The idea of which your abilities can be used in a lot of versatile ways is always interesting to me. Stuff like this is what really gets the creative juices flowing in my brain and why I love action games so much, especially with Devil May Cry. Action games typically revolve around the interactions that you have between the character that you play as and the enemies that you fight. Some games focus on having enemies that react to the player, which creates a dynamic push-pull factor where the more that you engage with the enemy, the more they engage with you, forcing you to always be on your toes at any given moment. Other games give you a lot more freedom to express the way that you want to play, and sometimes they give you a lot of tools while presenting some sort of challenge on the later difficulties. With me, I've always I've always been more on the creative side of games as a whole, and not just with action games either. Having this type of flexibility lets me think on the fly while stimulating that imaginative side of my brain. With this game, it not only fits the genre of games that I enjoy, it excels at it. In my last video about the DMC Devil May Cry reboot, I talked about how Devil May Cry games give you many different ways to manage the position of enemies that you fight. And what I mean by this is that you can launch enemies in a myriad of directions based on what type of attacks that you do to it. This type of enemy manipulation is what makes Devil May Cry very distinct because there are a lot of unique abilities that can influence an enemy's knockback. You can set up with all kinds of ideas and concepts with all the moves that you have and it allows for a very diverse sense of player expression. With the amount of abilities that you have in the Devil May Cry games, too often not one player will have the same style as another one. And I kind of want to do a video about this in the future too, about player expression basically. But anyway, Ultra Kill has this same thing where it not only gives you the option to manipulate enemies around you, which can be done by yanking enemies towards you with the whiplash arm or popping enemies up with a shockwave from slamming on the ground, but it also gives another layer of interactions and that is with the insane arsenal that you wield. Each of the weapons that you have can interact with each other in some way. I brought up with how with the marksman revolver, it allows you to toss a coin in the air so you can shoot at it and it will bounce off of the coin onto an enemy for critical damage. And this coin is way more ridiculous than you think it is. Why? Well, not only can you do this with your marksman variant bullets, but you can also do this with all the variants that you have for the revolver. That includes the alternate fire for both your piercer rounds and your sharpshooter rounds. And each coin adds a damage multiplier to the shot that you've done. But that's not all what this coin is capable of. Oh no, this coin is packed with so much potential, it can make any Johnny Main from Guilty Gear Zerd feel very insecure about their pocket change. When you toss a coin, 
It has certain states where a shot will turn into a split shot based on when you shoot it. The first opportunity happens right as the coin sparkles right after you throw it. Right after this, the coin goes back into its normal state and then reverts back into the split coin state after the coin falls for a period of time. When you shoot with any revolver that's not an alt fire projectile, your shot will be split into two projectiles. If you do this with four of your coins with the revolver, one shot will split into five different shots that can hit five different targets. If you use the electric rail cannon, you are able to ricochet a shot off of a coin. They won't split, but a thing that you can do with them is called rail coining, which involves ricocheting a beam off of the coin in a way so that you can hit the enemy multiple times. Since the beam of a rail cannon continues to go through the enemy that you shoot at, it can hit a coin that you've tossed behind the enemy to hit the enemy again. I believe this can be done with any type of weapon that can penetrate an enemy, but it's most effective with the rail cannon since it outputs so much damage. There's a ton more stuff that you can do with this coin so if you want to watch a video about it, I suggest checking out these two videos that go further in depth on what you can do. Be sure to check it out in the description. And I can't stress this enough because there's a lot this one dinky little thing can do. But like your coins, you can also use other weapons together in devastating combos. Like shooting the core eject from your shotgun, then using the malicious variant of the rail cannon, which will create a giant nuke. Or shooting the magnet from your rail gun and then firing rockets from your rocket launcher so that the rockets would automatically home in onto the target that you're hitting. Hell, while I was writing this script, I even figured out on my own that you can use whiplash on a freaking coin. It's, it's kind of cool because you can just juggle multiple coins. There's also a lot of in-depth weapon guides for each weapon on YouTube as well as wiki pages that go over all the stuff that has been documented so far. This game is incredibly deep and I think it's the most jam-packed when it comes to mechanics in any first-person shooter I have ever played. This type of interactivity between your weapons where they synergize together into a very creative way is something that I thoroughly enjoy whenever I boot up and play Ultra Kill. As a person who's been somewhat familiar with first-person shooter, at least as of right now, Ultra Kill was the one FPS game where I felt pressured on focusing on getting better with not only with my movement, but to come up with even more creative of setups considering that it's something that I like to do within my gameplay. The amount of freedom that you have to come up with your own type of playstyle is refreshing. While I enjoyed my time with Dusk and Doom Eternal, Ultra Kill felt like it satisfied that craving more to mix up with how I played to come up with all sorts of combinations not only to look cool but feel cool while I'm pulling it off. Like riding a rocket launcher in midair while tossing coins for me to shoot at. Stuff like this can be very technical to do on the fly and it feels damn good whenever I'm able to do it. And sure, none of this stuff is really required to actually beat the game. You can go through the entire game by just using the starting pistol because there's infinite ammo. It wouldn't be any fun, but that's an option. You can also use simple tactics to beat action games too. But again, you wouldn't catch me doing any of that. Like I said before in the analogy that I said in my Sonic Unleashed video, if you give me a box of crayons, I will use as many colors as I can to create a quality image. I will not take a single crayon because it's just boring and tedious to me. Like, why would you choose to waste a perfectly good box of crayons? Like, I don't get it. You got all the colors in the rainbow and all the colors are sitting right in front of you for you to use at any given time and you won't, you want me to use only one thing. No, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. The funniest thing about with all the weapons that are available to you, there are still weapons that are going to be released. From what I can tell, there are at least three other variants for your guns in two alternate versions as well, which I need to grab the already existing ones, but I'll get to that when I can. And there's also one additional arm. With what's available already, I cannot wait to see what else the devs have in store for us, because right now I'm, I'm fiending like, like a crackhead right now. I've been really addicted to playing this game for the past week, and I have not been able to put it down. Even writing this script, I had to pry myself from the game so I can at least work on the script. Although, while I do love the chaotic, insane nature of Ultra Kill, I will have to say that it 
has a bit of a learning curve for someone who's not used to these games. For me, I was able to get into it relatively okay, but that's because I've already built up a lot of skill from playing other action games, and, and this game kind of fits within that nature. But I can imagine that for the average player that's not used to fast-paced action, might fumble around with the weapons that are thrown at them. Seeing how some people were upset with Doom Eternal changing the original formula of Doom 2016, basically nudging the player to use more weapons and tools, which there are a lot of them, I can see that some people may not be able to keep up with Ultra Kill if they didn't like Doom Eternal. Because there's quite a lot going on. Even with me, I even found myself stumbling a bit because I was getting used to my controls. Despite my preference on trying to stick with default controls with most games that I play, I had to change my controls. I usually try to stick with default controls because I see it as a way for the developers to say, okay, these are the most optimal layout in our eyes. But I guess the better that you become at a game, the more you try to find even better ways of maximizing efficiency in your controls in a sense. So I don't know, it's, it's kind of a toss up for me. Overall though, my entire experience with Ultra Kill has been very, very enjoyable. Through each of the acts, Every stage that I cleared were a joy to blast through. Truth be told, I felt sort of nostalgic when everything sort of clicked with me while playing through the cyber grind. It's a weird feeling, I guess because it reminded me of the first time discovering Devil May Cry and seeing what was possible with the game. I get that same sense of wonder when I play Ultra Kill, so I can see myself playing this game for a very long time. I just wish Act 3 would come out faster because I'm, I, I really want to play some more. Anyway, thank you for listening. If you like my stuff, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time.